this week's parsha, let's start from the beginning and see what's going on. It starts. Actually, it doesn't start with this, but it says, Avraham and Sarah were old. Ba'im vayamim. This is what we're going to consider. Coming on in years. That's the translation. Chadaliot le Sarah orach kanashim. Sarah stopped having her uh, menstrual cycle. Yeah? And then it says again. This is before Sarah passed away. When she was 90. This is when she, Sarah was 90. Yeah? Over here... This is when Sarah was 90 and Avraham was 100. The next quote is later on. And then it says, Avraham zaken, and Avraham was old. And again it says, Coming on years, Baba Yamim. Vashem berachet Avraham bakol. And Avraham blessed Avraham in all. So the question is, what we don't understand, if when Avraham was 100, it already says coming on years. Obviously, we're in 127 over here. No, 137. No. Of course, it's coming on years. You don't need to tell me it again. What does it mean coming on on years? Baba Yamim. Okay. The Rebbe asks. The Rebbe says, I don't understand. It says, we already learned in Parashat Vayera. It already tells me that Avraham and Sarah are old, the coming on days. And how much more so? In comet, in codemly that it's Avraham and Sarah's kenim bayim bayimim. If before Yitzchak was born, they were coming on age. This is 40 years later almost. So obviously, 40 years later, they're for sure coming on age. They're still older. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you need to tell me again? What does it mean, coming in age again, 40 years later? Of course, if he was old when he was 100, he's older when he's 100, almost 140. It's obvious. Okay. So, So now we're going to get a whole new definition of what it means, Baba Yamim. Literally, if you look, it doesn't make sense in Hebrew either. In he if you translate it literally, it means coming in days. In the days is coming. What does that mean? So, if you go to every school, when there's a melamed, when there's a teacher, what is the teacher going to tell the kids when he's teaching us? So, a melamdim b'cheder masbirim shamashmaut zikna mufleget. The teachers in school, if you go to the school, it means very, very old. It means ancient in our time. You know, the guy is ancient already. Klumar, Lorak Zaken Stam, not just a regular old guy. No, 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 this guy is really old. Baba Yamim, it means it's really old. Elagam Baba Yamim, Shonos Fulod Yamim Rabim, he's more than old. He's Metushelach. You know, there's old and there's ancient. He's ancient. Ubemele Nosaf Yotel Bezikna. This is how they teach the simple meaning. This is what coming in days mean. Omnam kasher tedeke tev, if shall lefaresh, sha kavanal is lezikna mufleged. But it says, if you're going to look close at the times it's been used, these words, coming in days, you will notice that you can't say that. Why? Sheharei. Sarah was 90. Yeah, you can see it's staying ancient from here. Why? Shegam be David a melech nomar, because also when King David. About him it says, Vamelech David Zaken Baba Yamim. It says, and the King David is old, coming in days. And he wasn't that ancient. We know he, he passed away before seven, at 70 years old. So he wasn't ancient, he was 70 years old. And a 70 year old guy is not ancient. For sure, that's not really old. So, the whole concept of what Baba Yami means, we don't understand yet. Okay. So let's see. So we have to come and see the explanation of this. So the meaning of coming in days is just like it says. Sheba, 
that the person is coming, nichnas, he enters, betochayamim, inside the days. Yeah, what does it mean coming inside the days? Come on, baba bai, just like it says, he comes to the house. He comes to the day. What does it mean he comes to the day like he comes to the house? and similar to this. So let's see. Zotomeret, this means she'enze ti'ur mispar shnot ha'adam. We're not talking about how many years he lived. Im rav or me'at, if he lived many years, or if he lived little years. Ela often chayei ha'adam be'yamim elo. He describes how he lives. His life is coming into the day. What does that mean, we see soon? Klomau, which means, Shayamim she'avru alav, the days that passed on him, ha'me'uraot she'bahem chulu, everything that happened to him, hem be'ofen she'nichnas bahem, is in a manner that he enters into them. This is a problem that we're going to see happens with us all the time. Hainu, if I ask you, what do you remember? What age do you remember? Me? Yeah, no, but guys. Remember? You remember your life from which I asked, what, what happened three, um, four weeks ago? You have no clue. Four weeks ago? Yeah, yeah before that. <laughs> <laughs> what happened two months ago? <laughs> you have <laughs> no idea what happened two months ago. What happened, what happened two years ago? No, in your life, in you, in you. What happened to you two years ago? I have no idea. What happened to you three weeks, three days ago? I don't know. Nobody remembers. Then you know why? You know why you don't remember? Because you didn't come into the day. Think about a child. You ask him. You remember this trip. You remember. You go, he remembers the details. Where he was sitting. What he was doing. You remember your army time. You remember every detail. You remember the school. You remember every detail. Why? You came into the day. Then you experience coming into the day means you experience the day. Are you talking about the time of your life? No. Okay. No. I'm talking about your attitude. Okay. In the old time, you had the attitude that you came into the day. Today we come down to, hey, we've seen it before. Everything is the same. This is the same as this. We're old guys. Okay, let's see. Hainu, lo kmo davar ha'over v'cholef shelo nishar imenu roshem. Today, days go by. We don't remember. Everything is the same. You know, we've already experienced this day a hundred times before. You know, well, big deal. We did this. If it wasn't a war right now, this day and another day was exactly the same. Coming in days, it means you experience the day. You live it. You know what's going on. You are in the day. You live with the day. What does it mean? Litragesh. Get excited. I remember yesterday we did this. And the day before we tried this and it didn't work. So you remember, not every day is the same. It means to enter into your heart the day. It means that each and every day, in everything that happens to you, and whether it was something that made you happy, whether it was something that made you sad, you remember, you experience it, you lived it. It had effect on you. Until you can see it in your face, that the guy experienced something. Today, that's right. That's right. For example, my kids, <coughs> my, my kids tell me, "You remember the trip we took three days, three years ago to this and this?" I have no idea where we went, what we went. And they remember why? Because for them, it was an experience. For me, everything is the same. I'm an old man. I didn't come into the day. That's the idea. There you go. Because you came in the day, you experienced the day. You entered the, that, that day. You were there. In these days, that's right. In these days, we didn't come into the days. Ukfish, Roim Bemuchash, just like we see, she Yucholim Yot Shnea Nashim Botogil, you can have two people, same age. Shechad Mem Nir Amevugar Yotemashani, that one looks 
a hundred years older than the other ones. They're the same age. Why? You know why it looks older? Because he experienced harsh life. When, and the life, whether he liked it or not, had an effect on him. You know, a guy that came off the Holocaust and he's 50 years old, just was in the concentration camp and he experienced the concentration camps, doesn't look like a guy who lived in America and he's 50 years old. They look different. You know, there's a, the experience did something else. You know, there's pictures of uh, Sharon before Yom Kippur and after Yom Kippur. Did you ever see those? There's a picture like two days before Yom Kippur and there's a picture of him like maybe like three days after Yom Kippur or at the end of Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur was a week. How long was it? The whole thing. Yeah? He's a different human being. You can see he aged maybe 20 years in that week. The week did something to him. No, he experienced. Very, she, oh, there you go. Sometimes it's for the bad, like this one, yeah. but sometimes it can be for the good. Yeah. You can see that the person is alive. It doesn't have to be bad. I but it means it had an effect. The day had an effect on her. Not like today. Today we live, you know, we can live for 20 years. The same thing. Same day, same day, same day. Yeah. It says, if you take to your heart everything that experience, good and bad, it changes you. Now that we can know, then we understand, what does it say in David, King David, that he came into the day? What does it mean by King David, he came into the day? Even though King David lived only so many years, but you know how many lifetimes he went through? You know what experience he had to go through in the seven years? He had to go through hundreds of experiences. He had to fight wars. He had to live peace. He had to go through life. He had many wars he had to done. Like God said to him, you poured so much blood, he told King David. He had many sons. And all the sons tried to kill each other all the time. Evil here, evil there. They tried to kill him, they tried to kill themselves. It was a b disaster. He experienced life as a disaster. And it says, why? Because he experienced it. He took it to heart. Every day was a battle. Every day was an experience. Every day left an impression. That's what it means. He came in the days. Every day something happened. To change him. Naasa Baba Yamim. That's how he became coming in the days. So now let's go back to us. It depends what happened. Depends what happened. Al Pize Yesh Levaer Mashekatu Be Parshatenu. According to this, now we're going to go back to our Parsha. When it says Ve Avraham Zaken Baba Yamim, it says an Avram is old, is coming in days, doesn't mean he's ancient. What does it mean? Maybe the first time when it says they were Bayim Bayamim, you can say they were ancient. The second time, you have to learn something else. What do you learn the second time? It says, from the nature of things, this is the nature. You can't fight it. The older you become, the more coarse you become. Things don't affect you. I've seen it before. What, you're telling me anti-Semitism? Anybody who lived through World War II, seen all the anti-Semitism in the world, I've seen it before. He's seen it. He didn't think anything changed. I've seen it. Are you are surprising me. Surprising me at what's happening over here. Machim Yuter, he becomes wiser. So an older person comes to a conclusion. Not everything that happens, you should get excited. Ah. It's one of those attitudes. It happened before, it's going to happen again. All people are coarse. They don't get affected. It's hard to affect them. Or, 
לפי שטבעו של זקן שכבר עבר הרבה חייו. An old person already experienced many things. שאין לדברים שמסביבו תופסים מקום אצלו. That the things around him don't, you know, they don't happen to him. You know, you, you, you tell a guy in World War II that went through World War II, yeah? You tell the guy they killed the 1400 people. He's going to look at you. So, what are you talking about? <laughs> Every day they used to do it in Germany at the time. They used to come to a village and they used to kill 5,000 Jews in every village they do. 1,400 people? Ah, he already experienced it. It's not such a big deal for him. You know, this is what it means, old. Older people become coarse. Yeah, they experience it already. They become coarse. Velachen, this is why he tells you, אף שכבר נאמר ואברהם ושרה זקנים בימים, even though it already told you that Avram and Sarah coming in the, in the days, why? מצד ריבוי המאורעות שעברו עליהם עד זמן ההוא, because they experienced many things until this time, יש מקום וצורך לחדש שגם לאחרי ל"ח שנה אברהם זקן בימים. It has to tell you that Avram didn't change. Every day he remembered. Every day he fought. He experienced it like an 18 year old. He knew exactly what's happening. He went, you see, we don't care. Ah, this day, that day. He experienced like it's a new thing. In other words, when, when tomorrow comes for us, you know how we look at tomorrow? Huh? We had many days like this. When he looked at tomorrow, tomorrow is something new completely. That's the way he approached it. Tomorrow is going to be a day that the whole world is not going to change. I'm going to do something completely different. I'm going to become a new man tomorrow. That's what it means, coming in days. He came into the days. Every day is special Not just insane. He, le- he lived it. Yeah. And we have to say, Since then, until now, there were many occurrences in the life of Avram. הרבה יותר מאשר המאורעות בשנות חייו הקודמים, החל מהמאורע הכי קרי של יצחק עד לעקידתו. So he says, you, you can see in his life experience, the older he got, the more enormous his mission was. In other words, Abraham moved from being a non-Jew to a Jew. And not just from a non-Jew to a Jew, he did that things. And the older he got, he became more Jewish and more Jewish and more Jewish and more Jewish. And then he gave birth to the Jewish nation and he was asked to sacrifice the Jewish nation. You can see he's going from one level to a different level to a different level. He's going more and more and more. See, in our old age, we get into pension. We sit down, we relax, we sit on the beach, we drink margaritas. He, him, it was exactly the opposite. It became more and more and more. Every day we became even, he's going in trajectory. Okay. Al pi pirush ze bebaba yamin, so according to this explanation, coming in days, she yemei ha'adam em ba'ofen she nichnas ba'em u'poalim alav roshem, that the days have an impression on you, yuvan itev pirush ha'zohar. Now we're going to go to the Zohar, Kabbalistic book, to explain, we're going to understand what the Zohar says. Bebaba yamin, what does the Zohar say is coming in days? שכל ימי חייו היו שלמים בעבודת השם. The Zohar says, all his days were complete in the service of God. What? שלא החסיר מלעבוד את השם אפילו יום אחד מחייו. In other words, every day wasn't, there was no such thing as retirement in his life. Every day was a hundred percent war dedication towards God. In other words, for Abraham, every day was a war to do what God needs. Every day was a war. And if it's a war every day, you see it on him. It affected him. It was a war. He came up in the morning and says, how can I make this place a place for God more than it was yesterday? That's what he did every day of his life. Page six. Absolutely. That's exactly what it was. Absolutely. לפי הנ"ל מובן, so according to this it's understood, שפירוש הזוהר אינו על דרך הרמז בלבד. The Zohar just doesn't want to hint to you. אלא הוא מיוסד על הפירוש הפשוט בבא בימים. Tells you the simple explanation. What does it mean coming in the days? שלא היה יום אצל אברהם שרק חלף ועבר. There was not such days like by us that Avram didn't remember. 
How can you not remember? He was fighting, he was fighting the war every day. He was doing God's will every day. Ela Avraham ba venichnas beyamav. Avraham came in his days. לעבוד את השם בכל יום ויום, כפי שהנדרש בכל יום ולפי עניינו. Every day was different than the previous day. And every day a different kind of work. And what did he do? He dedicated his life at that day for that work. כלומר, העניין של בא בימים לפי פשוטו של מקרא, מתייחס לחייו הגשמיים של אברהם. He's been talking about the physical life of Abraham, שמאורעות כל יום ויום משפיעו עליו. He took to heart every occurrence in every day. ואילו בזוהר הפנימית התורה מודגש התוכן הפנימי של חיי אברהם. The Zohar explains the inner meaning of the life of Abraham. שהם חיי הנשמה, עבודת השם שלו, This is the life of the soul, This is the service of God. שהם חיי אברהם אמיתיים, This is the true life of Abraham. ובלשון רבנו הזקן, ג'סק דה אלטר רבי סז, שחיי הצדיק הם אינם חיים בשרים, כי אם חיים רוחניים. In other words, what was the life? What was the day of Abraham? The day of Abraham was to do God's will For that day, because every day was different than the previous day. Some days he needed to do that. Some, some days he had to go to war. Some days he had to invite guests. And it doesn't matter, go to war and invite guests. It was an experience. Some days they had to do guests and then Sheikh Nisan. And then Sheikh Nisan. And then, and then Nisan. Very, very good. That, that, that. ולכן מפורש שזה אברהם בא ונכנס בכל יום ויום. And this is what it says, that Avram came in every day. עד שהיה ניכר עליו הרושם שכוי חייו. Every day made an impression, changed him. In other words, by us, you cannot say that every day changed you. You know, so there's years that go by and we're the same person that we were before. Abraham wasn't even one day like this. Every day changed him. He learned. He was, some, he was a new person. He became somebody else every day. היינו. לפי שכל ימיו היו עם אלוהים בבת השם, every day was fooled with the service of God, באופן שכל יום ויום הוא יום חי, in a manner that every day was alive, and because every day was alive, he remembered it, and it made an impression on it, and you could see it on him. It changed him physically. He wasn't the same person. Okay. The same thing we're going to see now is going to be with Sarah. Exactly the same thing that we saw in Abraham, we're going to see with Sarah. How do we see this? So we are on page number seven, source number three. This is the beginning of this week's parsha. Vayu chayei Sarah, and it was the life of Sarah, me'at shana ve'esrim shana ve'sheve shanim, 127 years, shnei chayei Sarah, the years of the life of Sarah. And Rashi says, what does he have to say, the years of the life of Sarah? He already told us in the beginning that this is the years of Sarah. So why does he say it a second time? So Rashi says, Kulan shavim letuva. They're all good, the same, they all had the same good in it. Now what does that mean? So let's see. The Rebbe explains, Shema parasha u chayei Sarah. The name of the parasha is the life of Sarah. Klomar, Shekol mea esrim v'sheba ashenim she Sarah nechlalim b'shem achat. that all 127 years of Sarah, we're going to put in the one name, Chayei Sarah. Uvelashon Rashi, kulam shavim letova. All of them are equally to good. Which means, ulechora ino muvan. Rabbi says, what do you mean they're all equal to good? They can't be all equal to good. Ketzad yecholim lichlol et kol 127 shanim biyachad. How are you going to include all 127 years together? Beshem echad, Chayei Sarah, in one name, the life of Sarah. כולם שווים לטובה, and says they're all as good. What does it even mean? It's impossible to say that. הרי במשך 127 שנים, in the life, her life of 127 years, היו חילוקים מן הקצה לקצה. Her life went up and down tremendously. She went through experience, one was a high, one was low. וכמובן בפשטות, and it's obvious, שאין להשוות את מעמדה ומצבה של שרה בהיותה ברור כסדים. You want to tell me that Sarah, before she was Jewish, she was in a place, אור כסדים. Yeah, in that place, Syria, whatever it is. או רבי מלך גתן. וכן בחרן, also when she went to חרן, אף שגם הייתה שרה מגיירת אנשים כפירוש רש"י. Even though she was doing God's work, 
Yeah? You want to see that's the same thing as when she gave birth to Yitzchak? So a whole different ball game. לגבי מעמדה ומצבה לאחר קיום הציווי ילך לך מארצך אל הארץ שלך to after she became Jewish after לך לך ועד לחילוק ורחוק הערך בתכלית בין מעמדה ומצבה בעת ששמע אודות הכיתת יצחק imagine her when she learned about the binding of Isaac שזהו ריחוק הערך מן הקצה לקצה this is the highest thing that happened and to the lowest thing that happened I mean she had many experiences how can you say they're all good ואם כן, אם נפטיס היא זו, איך יכולים לכלול את כל משך 126 שנים אחרי שרה בשם אחד חיי שרה? How can you say that everything is included, that this is what Rashi says? No, they all were good, the same good. What does it mean? They all the same good. Page 8. והביאור בזה. So the explanation in this. חיי שרה, the life of שרה, מתייחס לעניינים שבהם הייתה חיות של שרה. tells us that this is the years of the life, the energy of Sarah. כלומר, העניינים שבהם Sarah חיה. This is what was her life. Her life was the same. It says, you think it was different. You're wrong. Her entire life was exactly the same. It says, why do we think her life was different? Because we look at her experiences through our eyes, not through her eyes. We looked at it as if, if we were there. She was there, but she didn't look at all your experiences as the same as she looked at it. Let's see how. V'inyan ze haya be'ofen shave b'meshech kol mea estim shev shana khaya kaya. And Rashi tells you, says, you think she had up and downs? Says, you're wrong. She never had any up and downs. Her entire life was exactly the same. Her 127 years were exactly the same. There was no difference in them. Says, what does it mean? ולכן נכללים כל 126 שנים שם אחד חיי שרה. So this is why they're all called one unit. כי הנה, says let's start and understand this. אפילו יהודי פשוט מבין שהתוכן והמשמעות האמיתית של חיי שרה, even a simple Jew understand when we say, when we say what is the life of שרה, לא יתבטא באכילת ארוחת בוקר. We're not talking about The life of Sarah was what she ate for this morning. You know how pe- you, you ask people, wh- what's your life? So they have their life on Facebook. It's what they ate for b- breakfast, what they ate for lunch, and what they ate for dinner. For sure, that wasn't her Facebook post. She didn't post what she ate for dinner and lunch and uh, breakfast and what jewelry did she get. And did she get a Zara shirt or she didn't get a Zara shirt? Yeah? Or a Zara shirt. That wasn't her life. That we know for sure. No, in any of these things, Sarah. That's for sure. wasn't the life of Sarah. הוא פשוט שהעניין של חיי שרה לא יתבטא בזה שהייתה בביתו של פרעה או בביתו של אבימלך. And also it doesn't mean that her life changed in any manner when she was the house of פרעה או the house של אבימלך. She couldn't care less about פרעה. She couldn't care less about אבימלך. כי העובדה שמלך גדול כפרעה ואבימלך מהלל ומשבח את יופייה and the fact that פרעה thought that she was the most beautiful woman in the world ועד שלוקח אותו עליו until he wanted to marry her הנה לא זו בלבד שעניין זה לתפס מקום אצל הכלל not only she wasn't impressed by it אלא אדרבה עניין זה גרם לה לצער בסבל שאין כמוהו it says it was the opposite it pained her you say you think of course כי אין כי איזה עסק יש לבת ישראל עם גוי Because what kind of a, 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 a Jewish woman want to be with such an evil goy? How much more so when we're talking about our matriarch Sarah? So when we're saying Chayei Sarah, what was her life? So we made batei for atochen v'amashmout amitit shechayei Sarah. So what was the life of Sarah? הרי זה מפורש בפירוש, רש"י בפרשתנו. So Rashi explain what was the life of Sarah. Sarah had three things in her life. That's it. That's all she cared about, that's all she did. Everything else wasn't important. Number one, ner daluk me'erev Shabbat le'erev Shabbat. She made sure that her candle was not like a regular candle. Her candle was lit from one Shabbos to the next Shabbos. Ubracha metzuya ba'isa. And when she made food, she made bread, it was a blessed bread. Her bread came with blessings. וענן קשור על האוהל, וענן קשור על האוהל, and there was a cloud hung on the tent, which means מקווה, family purity, 
שלוש המצוות המיוחדות לנשי ישראל. This is the three mitzvahs that are uh, important to the Jewish women. It's called נשק, נר שבת קודש. ועל פי זה מובן כיצד כוללים את כל 127 שנים בשם אחד חיי שרה. Now you can understand all the things that happened on the way that was in her life. When she was by, um, it doesn't matter where she was in her life. She had three things. That was her life. Those three things to make sure there's light in her house. When we say there's light in her house, it means spiritual light also, not just physical light. And when we're saying there was blessing in the house, she's the one who brought the blessing into the house. And keeping family purity, she's the one who kept the family purity. כי בכל שנות חייה של שרה, בכל שינויה עם התנאים של השנים האלו, it doesn't matter what happened throughout these years, היה עניין של חיי שרה. This was the life of שרה. כלומר, שבכל הזמנים כולם, it means in all these times, היה תוכן והמשמעות האמיתית של חיי שרה, every time, this was the things, there was always a candle lit, there was always blessing in the bread, and there was always family, beauty, uh, family purity. All the three pillars that the Jewish home thinks. This was the life of Sarah. And that was equal in all the things. This is the teaching, both from Sarah and from Abraham. Every Jewish woman, even a woman that is found herself in a situation, she doesn't know Jewish law. She found herself, she was, didn't know, and she found out when she was 50 years old what the right thing to do. But what does every Jewish woman know? Even though she doesn't know any Jewish law, you know what she knows? She knows if I go back far enough, my great, 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 great grandmother was Sarah. That's what she does know. If she's a Jewish woman, she can be completely atheist. She knows she comes from Sarah Imenu. ומכיוון שמובן בפשטות, אפילו לאינם יהודים, and since this is understood even to non-Jews, we're in the third paragraph on page 9, שהתוכן והעניין של חיי שרה לא התבטא באותם עניינים שבהם שקועים וחיים נשי אומות העולם. She didn't care about things that the other women in the other nations care about, אשר במלכותו של פרעה וממלך, those women who lived in Paro's kingdom, or Ravi Melech's kingdom, Levishat Simla Yafa, she couldn't care about the Zara dress that she wore or where she got it. Na'alayim ba'le kev gavoa, it she had high enough hills or so on, v'cha yotze b'ze. Ki im b'nenim na'alim yote, her life was these three things that we said before. That was the Jewish woman cares about. Harei zo hora'a pshuta, this is the message. Lechol bat Yisrael, bita shesarayim enu, to every Jewish lady. שהחיים שלה צריכים להיות בשלושת הדברים שבהם מתבטא כאילו את העניין שלך יסרה. That her life has to be concentrated in those things that Sarah was concentrated on. Like we said, Nerdaluk, the candles, the blessings in the bread, and uh, which means all the kosher things in the house is her responsibility, and also a family purity. ולכן גם אם היה משך זמן מסוים שהחצר אצלה בהנהגה המתאימה לרוח שלך יסרה, and even though the woman might have not known about all these rules until she became 50 years old, or 20 years old, or 30 years old, and right now she's just finding it out, ביכולתה לשנות מעמד ומצב זה, לבוא לדרגה כזו שהנהגתה תהיה בדיוק מותר נגד שחי שרה. She can leave Sarah and the high hills behind, and she can start caring about the things that one should care right now when she is in her life. Let's continue. Now comes the problem. You, you, you say, this is very, very nice, but you know what? Some women figured out all the things after the kids already left the house. Says so she was an atheist woman. She didn't know there was such a thing as God. She didn't. She did know she's the, a Jew, but that's about it. That's where it ended. So now, if she was told when she was 25 years old, and then she did tshuva and she cared about it, that is, she did something. She raised the children, she has her children Jewish, she made sure her children ate Jewish kosher food, uh, family purity was done the right way, and so on and so forth. But what happens if she was already 60? 
you know, no, no. that's it. All the kids are out of the home. She lives. Her husband might have already passed away, and now, and now what? Now, now she found out what. What is she going to do now? So the Rebbe says, "Yetera mizo." לא זו בלבד שביכולתה לשנות את מעמדה ומצבה מכאן ולהבא. First of all, she's 20 years old or 25 years old or 30 years old, she can change her life from here onwards. That's for sure. אלא ביכולתה גם לתקן את מעמדה ומצבה בעבר. But it's even possible to fix the past over here. It says, what do you mean fix the past? The children are already born. What are you going to how, how are you going to fix it? How? על ידי כללות העניין של אהבת ישראל ואחדות ישראל. So bringing love of the Jewish people and the unity of the Jewish people together. כלומר, what does it mean? על ידי שהיא פועלת על בת ישראל נוספת להעמיד בקרן הורה, it says, if it's true that she cannot do any more family purity, she's 60 years old, she goes to the mikveh one time and that's it, that's family purity. Of course she has to you know, cover her hair, um, walk modestly, and so on and so, and, and so forth. But family purity, the main stuff, to be with her husband, family purity, that's, that's finished already. She's 67 years old. Now what? She says she can still do something. She can't fix her past, you say? No. The Rebbe says she can. How? She didn't go to the mikveh, but she can make sure that another woman that until now didn't go to the mikveh goes to the mikveh. And she caused all the times that she didn't go to the mikveh. Now it considered like she went to the mikveh. She did the thing. She, all the things she, she ate non-kosher before. Now she's making sure there's another household that they do eat kosher. Every time they eat kosher, it's like she feed, fed them kosher food from before. To explain this. בפרשתנו מובא מאמר הזוהר על הפסוק ואברהם זקן בא בימין. The Alter Rebbe explains this verse. When it says, ואברהם was old coming in days. באינון ימים מלאים. It says, what do you mean coming in days? It says, the Zohar explains, he came in the high days. In those days that are high. What does it mean? כלומר שכל הימים צריכים להיות בשלימותם. By him, every day was complete. In other words, the... God gave you a potential to do in a day what you can do in a day. Avram did 100% every day of what he could have done. He couldn't have done more. Every second, every millisecond, he, did, he put exactly the time that was allowed to him to give. In other, in other words, you can give it to, it doesn't matter who. You would not, no one in the world would be able to do more than Avram did in, in that day. על פי זה נשאלת השאלה, מה עושים עם אותם ימים שבהם היה במעמד ומצב בלתי רצוי? So he says, what do you do with those days that it, Abraham didn't like it? For example, בדוגמת מצבה של שרה בבית פרעה, בית אבי מלך, there were days that פרעה wasn't in her house, she couldn't, she was in the house of פרעה, and she was housing בית אבי מלך. What did she give them kosher food? That wasn't the idea. They don't, they're not supposed to eat kosher food. I mean, they can if they want to. But there's only mitzvah on them to eat kosher food. So what's the idea over there? So the answer for this, when you make sure that another Jew does what they're supposed to do, and you find another Jew that is in the house of Paro, that is in the house of Avimelech, Today, there's many Jews that are in the house of Paro, that are in the house of Mavimelech. So you, yeah, she, today, the, the, the woman that find another Jew in the house of Paro, in the house of Mavimelech, she takes her out of that house and she teaches, it is, this is, you correct that thing. She נמצא במעמד ומצב בלתי רצוי, a Jew that is, not in a good situation, and you light the house for that Jew. Since God pays measure for measure, it says, you took my kid, my woman, from Paro's house, and you showed them the light. I'm also going to consider the light that was extinguished by you all these years. Here's Here's the light. ועל ידי זה הרי הוא מתקן ומשלים את כל ענייני העבר. So this is how he can fix all the things in the past. 
So over here we can see, by, by Judaism, there's no such things you cannot fix the past. There's no such thing. You can think you're 60, what am I going to fix now? It doesn't matter. You can fix the past. First of all, from now on, you do it. And even the things that you cannot do now on, you can help other people to do. Just like God says, you made a poor person by giving charity, you enlivened a Jew. If you were decreed to die on that day because you made another Jew live, I'm going to make you live also. This is what charity does. Since you saved my child, I'm going to save you. This is measure against measure. Page 11. So this is um, the measurement that God works for because God is justice and if he sees that you act in such a justice manner, obviously God is going to act in this. Um, the last thing that we just like to share, it's an interesting thing. This is from a letter that the Rebbe writes a woman that said pretty much what I said to the Rebbe. She became a Balchuva at a very old age and she says, okay, from now on I can take, but what about, you know, but what, what about all the rest? Rest of my life, at, at the good, when I was supposed to take all the things, I didn't know. Now I found out, but it's too late now. That's what she, that's what she told. And she's very depressed that it's too late. So, so the, the Rebbe writes her back, Kotevet, he, he says, she writes to me, the Rebbe, you write to me, it's like you cannot fix anything. It says, the belief that you cannot fix the past is the opposite of Judaism. Because we have, because we have a rule, nothing can stand in the way of repentance. There's nothing you cannot, there's nothing you could have done that you cannot repent for. And then he continues, the odd vegamze and says, and furthermore, and this is the main thing. By the way, we, over here she's talking about um, family purity or whatever. It doesn't matter, it's in our life also. Many things that we find out that we need to do, and we say, oh, we should have known it 20 years ago. No, you can know it now, it's fine. Whenever you found out about it, you know, that's not, right now is the time to start doing it. And this is what the Rebbe says, ve'od ve'gam ze'ikar. He says, this is the main thing. Pashut she'inyan bilti ratsui, it's obviously that it's not the right way. Ha'tikun shedo hu al'yedei inyan ratsui ve'tov ve'kadosh. It says, the truth is that what happened was not good. But right now when you're going to fix it, that's the holiness. This is, first of all, this is what you're supposed to do. This is holy. Velo chas v'shalom l'osif be'od inyan b'lti ratzu. It says, and what do, what do want most people do? Most people find out, I didn't eat kosher, you know, for the last 50 years. Oh, I'm depressed. And what do they do? Nothing about it. Because they're depressed. You know, I'm depressed. I didn't eat for so many years. I didn't eat kosher. No, it's just the opposite. You become depressed. Oh, I didn't learn Torah for all these years. Or I didn't keep family purity for all these years. Whatever the thing is. So they become depressed. He says, instead of becoming depressed, it's exactly the opposite of what you're supposed to do. They bring depression into their life. And some people, especially Balchuvas, think to themselves, I'm never going to be, you know, holy now. Look at all the sins I've done my whole life. Look at everything I've, di I've done. All these terrible things I've been doing my whole life. And I just now find out about it. I'm so sorry, but, you know, I must be such a low life. That's the conclusion that they come up with. And they get depressed. <laughs> the Rebbe says, this is exactly the opposite of the attitude of what one should have. <laughs> so first of all, from now on, you have to do it with enthusiasm. You have to be happy that this is the time. And also, he's talking to her about family purity that she didn't keep. He says, so your job maybe is going to be, the Rebbe tells you, if you want to, first of all, you keep whatever you want to keep now. There's modesty now, there's uh, covering the hair, there's whatever it is that women need to do. 
even if you do, your husband is gone, he's not here, and you're old, yeah? And you know what you can do? Learn the subject of family purity and give classes about it to young women. Teach them, take them to the mikveh, become a mikveh lady, for example. Things like this. Shechukei v'dinei tarat ha-mishpacha, learn the, the rules and teach the rules of family purity, besvivata, in her surroundings, ben makirotea v'idirotea. And, and this is the important part. And, and a lot of people miss the point over here. It says you don't have to give classes in shuls. No, that's what I asked you to do. You know why? Because the shuls have already are giving classes. It's not your job. But you know your job? You have friends from the past that would never come to shul, would never set. So right now, don't run to shul. To give. Somebody is already giving, giving classes in shuls. Your friends from the past, all the... Oh, those ones, slowly, slowly, you don't have to press them, tell them about the mikveh, explain to them a good word over here, a good word over there, and slowly, slowly, you explain to them the benefits of Kabbalah purity, that's when you get to it. It says, in other words, the job that you can do, what people are trying to do is now, they're trying to do somebody else's job, and the job that they're supposed to do, nobody's doing. Nobody's doing, because they think, oh, I need to do this. You need to... The, those people that are your friends from the past, this is the job. This is your job. Don't come and, and try to, no, I'm going to start a new thing. You don't have to. Even your own environment around you, the people that you already know, your business partners, your friends, your people that you know in your family, this, that's where you start. You don't have to start, you know, to give classes in, uh, I don't know, in stadiums. 